Because of Irina Sendler's courage and leadership, by stepping up out of hundreds to rescue the Jewish children, thousands of lives act as her living legacy. On September 1, 1939, Germany invaded Poland, beginning World War II. The Poles fought bravely, but by October 6, over 60,000 Polish troops were dead. Because of the hatred towards the Jews, Adolf Hitler ordered that all the Jews were to be forced to ghettos and concentration camps, a dark and fearful fate. Irina Sendler was born in Warsaw, Poland on February 15, 1910, to Stanislaw and Nina Krzyzanowski. Her father was one of the only physicians that was willing to treat Jewish people in the city of Ottawa. One day, he told her something that would change her life forever. Irina, if you see a man drowning, you must jump in to save him, whether you can swim or not. Her father's words and example lit the spark of Irina's love for the Jewish people, but the experience that made that spark grow into a flame is one she never forgot. She saw a Jewish father with his children as they were being forced onto a train that led a fate unknown to them. The father reassured his children that they would be back soon, but Irina knew that they would never see their home again. It broke Irina's heart to witness this, and from then on, she knew she must jump in the water to save the Jewish people. Even before the war, Irina was devoted to the Jews. When she attended the Warsaw University, Jewish students were required to sit on the opposite side of the room, secluded from the other students. Irina felt that the exclusion was wrong, and one day she chose to sit with the Jewish students. She was expelled because of it. On October 1940, 40,000 Jews, one-third of the Warsaw population, was forced to live in the Warsaw Ghetto which was cut off from the rest of the city. The conditions were horrible and inhumane. The living space was small and cramped, and there was little food. When Irina was 32, a typhoid epidemic broke out in the ghetto. Irina was part of an underground resistance group called the Zagoda that worked against the Nazis. Because of the epidemic, she and her Zagoda colleagues took the advantage of posing as nurses and being able to have access in and out of the ghetto. She was able to receive a pass from Warsaw's Epidemic Control Department, and she went daily into the ghetto to give the Jews medicine, food, and clothing. They left. She was a very quietly just good person who did things because she felt to help. Despite their efforts, however, 5,000 people a month were still dying from starvation and disease. Irina said, when the war started, all of Poland was drowning in a sea of blood. But most of all, it affected the Jewish nation. And within that nation, it was the children who suffered most. That's why we needed to give our hearts to them. Irina, with her code name of Jolanta, was put in charge of the children's division along with 25 others. The Zagoda was divided into several groups. Of the 25, 10 were to smuggle the children out, 10 were to find families for the children, and 5 were to create false documents for the families that took in the Jewish children. The 10 in charge of smuggling the children were the ones that posed as nurses, and in doing so were able to have access in and out of the ghetto during the epidemic. This also enabled them to talk with the children's parents to convince them it was safer to smuggle them out than for them to stay. It was hardest for the parents knowing they would most likely never see their children again, and it was hard for Irina to convince the parents to part with their children. See that? If you can give, I can help. I can get a child out and get it in a good home to live. And, and she said how difficult it was for mothers who loved their children. But they loved them so much that they that they all gave them up. On one occasion, when Irina took the baby, the mother called after her. Promise me my child will live. Irina replied, saying, I cannot promise that, but I can promise that if he stays with you, he will die. Irina knew that if these children stayed, they would be taken to the concentration camps and would die. She and her colleagues had many ways of smuggling the children out. The smaller children were sedated so as not to be heard crying, and were then hidden in containers such as medical bags, potato sacks, toolboxes, body bags, and even coffins. The older children could be taken out if they were sick or pretended to be. They were taken through underground tunnels and sewers. Sometimes they could sneak through the courthouse that had a door leading outside of the ghetto. Once outside, they were given false names and documents and placed into orphanages or with Polish families. Some families were very courageous and took the children in, 
but if caught, the punishment was severe. Death would be wrought upon all. Nearly 700 people died because of this. The children were often relocated to several different families. One boy said while being relocated, How many mothers can a person have? This is my third. The real names of the children Irina saved, with all of their information, was written on documents, put in a jar, and buried in the dirt next to an apple tree in Irina's yard. On October 20th, 1943, Irina was captured by the Gestapo and was arrested and imprisoned in Warsaw's Pawiak prison. She was tortured by having her feet and legs broken. Even with these terrible consequences, she still refused to give away information about her co-conspirators or the children they rescued. She was sentenced to death by a firing squad, but she accepted the sentence with pride. As she was being led to her execution, she found out that the Polish government had managed to release her. Irina went throughout the rest of the war in hiding, much like the children she saved. She helped in any way she could, being relentlessly pursued by the Gestapo. But on April 19, 1943, the Warsaw Ghetto was liquidated. After the war, Irina spent several years trying to reunite as many children with their families as she could. She dug up the names that were buried under a tree and sorted through the documents. She was only able to reunite a few children with their parents because most of them had perished. Some of the children's foster families accepted them into their home permanently after the war. Irina searched for many years for the children, but some were never found. Though Irina did miraculous things to save the Jewish children, her bravery and valor was not recognized until later in her life. When she was finally acknowledged, she received many awards from governments and associations alike. Some of them included Poland's highest distinction, the Order of the White Eagle, in 2003, and was even nominated to win the Nobel Peace Prize. As Irina was recognized, she refused to be called a hero and told people that what she did was perfectly normal. And until her passing on May 12, 2008, at the age of 98, she was haunted with the fact that she didn't do enough. In her autobiography, she said, I personally feel very uncomfortable because of this whole fuss which constantly makes heroes of us. These grand festivities which accompany the planting of a tree in Jerusalem, the big celebration which occurs in Israel, it is all very embarrassing for persons of my type who don't consider themselves to be great people or heroes. We did these things as completely normal things on the principle that when a person is drowning, we should reach out a hand to them, or at least a pinky finger. This constant emphasis on how extraordinary our work was, it is uncomfortable. A Jew, a Frenchman, a German, they are, after all, the same people like us. That was the only thought in our minds. That which we did came from a need in our hearts. Irina Sendler, though she refused to be called one, was truly a hero by saving thousands of lives. She was a leader not only by leading others in the Zagoda, but by stepping up to work against the Nazis, and in doing so, proving that anyone can be a leader. Her legacy is the thousands of lives she has saved. Elzbieta Vikowska in later years said, Mrs. Sendleroa saved not only us, but also our children and grandchildren and the generations to come. She was a perfect example of how anyone can do extraordinary things and what human beings will go through to promote what they believe in.